The further I dive into the world of Cartoon Network mobile games from the 2000s, the more fascinated I become. It's such a sparsely documented aspect of Cartoon Network's history, even in comparison to their console video games, which have spotty coverage at best. This week I've plucked out the Powerpuff Girls Bad Mojo, which is a really fascinating release for a bunch of reasons. My interest in this little mobile release started with the title. It's stunningly similar to Bad Mojo Jojo, which was technically the first ever Cartoon Network game as it released on the same day as Dexter's Lab Robot Rampage, which was actually just a reskin of Elevator Action EX. A confusing title situation like this would usually be avoided like the plague. When you google the Powerpuff Girls Bad Mojo, naturally most of the results are for the Game Boy Color game. It's in moments like this that I think it really shows just how little oversight went into these games from Cartoon Network. Similar to how the Johnny Bravo game I reviewed a little while back was able to get away with a lot of edgy and risque references. It also seems that Cartoon Network had partnered with a single developer for all of their Java games around this time. Both the Courage game and Dex's Lab mobile games I reviewed were developed by Macrospace, and while I couldn't find a release date for Bad Mojo, it was also developed by Macrospace. Because it's a macro space game, it uses the exact same menu and high score setup as those previous games. It seems they were really proud of their ability to incorporate online leaderboards, so they shoehorned it into every game, whether it fit perfectly or not. But I think the most fascinating aspect of Bad Mojo is that the game pretty much functions as a sequel to Mojo Jojo Agogo, which was released on the GBA in 2001. These two titles don't share developers or anything, and much like the title of Bad Mojo being similar to the first ever Powerpuff game, I think the similarity in gameplay is purely coincidence. This here is a shmup or shoot 'em up if you're not into cool and trendy lingo. Mojo Jojo A Gogo used this genre to decent effect. It wasn't the greatest game in the world, but it was pretty interesting. Macrospace are putting their own spin on the genre, which immediately caught my attention. Mobile games really were the wild west for Cartoon Network. When jumping into Bad Mojo, it's hard not to make comparisons. Obviously, we've lost a bit of fidelity and complexity in the graphics and gameplay because of the change in hardware, but at its core, it plays quite similar. You'll use the D-pad to move up, down, left and right, with waves of enemies coming at you from the right of screen as you automatically scroll along. You'll press 5 to shoot your laser attack, while every now and then defeated enemies will drop Chemical X. When you activate one of these, the entire screen is cleared of enemies, is one of the oldest staples in the shmup genre. In fact, this genre is so clearly defined that it's kind of hard to innovate anything. This is a style of game that has existed since the late 70s, so everything that you attempt to include has probably been done before. One neat little addition Macrospace dropped in here though is an auto-fire option. I'm sure there are dozens of shmups who beat them to the punch with this idea, but damn is it genius. One thing I find quite annoying personally when it comes to a shmup is that I'm constantly having to just mash the fire button. I've found that there's usually no penalty to just spamming the fire button in these games. It makes the most sense to just be firing your weapon at all times. This leads to the gameplay being kind of agitating or fatiguing because you just repeatedly slam the fire button. Bad Mojo does away with this by allowing you to turn on auto fire. This idea probably spawned from it being a mobile game where constantly tapping a small button would be extra annoying, but regardless, I love the option. If you ask me, every shmup needs this. The most notable change from Mojo Jojo A Go Go is the characters. In that game, you played as all three characters at once. You'd travel through the level, and each of the girls would essentially act as lives, and you could switch between them on the fly. Bad Mojo is less complex, asking players to just choose one girl before jumping in. When you do settle into the gameplay, things can be kind of weird. You've got typical shmup staples like power-ups that increase your firepower, but you almost immediately start encountering all of the concessions Macrospace had to make to bring a game like this to phones. This has got to be one of the slowest shmups I've ever played. You move along so slowly, and even when they start throwing ridiculous amounts of enemies towards you at once, it never truly captures the chaotic energy of other games I've played in the genre. The lack of any soundtrack also combines with the slow pace to make a super weird vibe. It's kinda eerie and unsettling if I'm being honest. Another concession of the platform seems to be the enemies. Instead of actual enemies, you seem to just be fighting different types of foods. I played through the first two worlds and I got to take on meat and vegetables. Very strange opponents to have. My assumption is that this was done because including more elaborate enemies would have been too tough for the platform to handle. 
I tried to confirm whether later levels had different enemies, but the one video showcasing the game on the entire internet ends on the second world, which is as far as I could make it. At the very least, you do get to face off against iconic enemies at the end of each world. I got to see both Fuzzy Lumpkins and a broccoli alien from the Beat Your Greens episode. Mojo Jojo himself is the main antagonist, so I assume you face off with him later too. The main reason I didn't explore more of this game was the insanely difficult second boss. Everything prior to that fight is dead easy, you could beat it with your eyes closed, but then you get to this fight and experience one of the most insane difficulty spikes ever. It's here that more and more of the game's flaws start to become exposed. In particular, I started noticing that the hitboxes could be very janky. In general, it feels like macro space was sloppy with bad mojo. Sometimes power-ups would carry over from stage to stage, other times you'd start back from square one. There was no rhyme or reason to this other than it being an oversight from the devs. One of the most egregious issues pops up when you beat a stage. Once you make it all the way through, the game takes control of your character as they fly off the screen. When this happens, there's still the possibility of a projectile or two being on the screen. If these are still lingering about and the game takes control from you, you can still take damage. There's nothing quite like losing a life because the game rips control out of your hands and flies you straight into a projectile like an idiot. It's just little things like that which add up and make Bad Mojo a more unsatisfying experience than it should be. One thing I did like was that their insistence on including arcadey high school leaderboards didn't completely destroy the gameplay here. In Dexter's Lab security alert you could restart from where you died, but the game would revert your character to the state it was in when you first entered the level. If you had just a single life to your name, then you pretty much got stuck in a never ending loop of death. Here you can choose to play any level you've been to at any time, and starting off with no power ups isn't that big of a deal, at least not early on. The Powerpuff Girls Bad Mojo had real potential. It's a decent enough shmup at its heart, but some massive oversights and concessions, assumingly made to fit it onto mobiles at the time, have messed with the final product. It hurts the game even more when years earlier the same concept was made for the GBA and succeeded way more in pulling off the shmup style. At the end of the day, if I was playing this back in the day, I would have definitely put it down for good after the second world's boss fight. Slamming your head against the wall with a ridiculous difficulty spike is the complete opposite of what I would want to experience while taking the bus to school or wherever I would be playing this game. Next week, my fairly odd parents break into rules review should finally be ready to go. So make sure you subscribe to catch all of my latest content.